During today's show, we covered the tradition of a motorcycle company. We feature a community arts center. And we cover a yearly event that is notable in the Michiana area, all here on the Globe News Report. Welcome to the Globe News Report. I'm Brandon Rowe. And I'm Jeremiah Sherrill. Well, Jeremiah, it's the end of April and the end of the first year of the Globe News Report. What did you enjoy most during the first year of Globe TV? Well, I enjoyed working with all the cool people we have here at the Globe. What about you, Brandon? I really enjoyed getting to be involved with all the different positions, whether it's camera work or production or directorial stuff or even anchoring. Janus Motorcycles create a different kind of motorcycle that is built by hand right in Goshen, Indiana. Riley Friesner took the opportunity to go down there and meet with the owner, Riley with more. We're here at Janus Motorcycles in downtown Goshen to learn about one of the coolest local businesses around and a little bit more about an event they call Discovery Days. Discovery Days are an event we have now twice a month. We regularly have people from the west coast, um, the southeast, northeast, um, as well as you know the kind of midwestern motorcycle riding states. Um, they come in, we give them an in-depth tour of our shop, we show a video, talk about our design process, and then do test rides. Um, we usually actually go on the test route that we test every bike on. Um, it's about a 12 mile loop. And then we take everybody out for lunch and a beer at uh, Goshen Brewing. We started doing that about two years ago, and it's proven to be our main way we sell motorcycles. We say it all the time, but I don't think we can do this anywhere else. We get a lot of pride in being part of the downtown. Our values are very much aligned with, I think, what Goshen stands for. Uh, crafted by hand. We use as much local things as we can. For a manufacturing company, we're kind of more on the art side of things, more kind of artistically uh, inclined. Um, I think that all kind of is very similar to what Goshen has become um, as an art, an art center in, the, in Indiana in the Midwest. We were just a really small operation. You know, we're about 10 people full time uh, are building motorcycles and doing all the things that we sell the motorcycles. All, all those things happen right here. There's no dealerships. This is the world headquarters of, and the only place you can see a, motor, a Janus motorcycle unless you talk to an owner. And uh, we're just really happy to be here. And we have a, a showroom, so if you want to come by and check it out, we're always we're eight to five. Come on by. And if you have a motorcycle endorsement, you can take one out for a spin. To learn more about Janus Motorcycles or Discovery Days, you can visit their website at janusmotorcycles.com. This has been really cool, and I think I need to take this thing out for a spin. For Globe News, I'm Riley Friesner. It is really great to have the opportunity to support local businesses like Janus Motorcycles. Yeah, and they kind of remind me of those old uh, vintage motorcycles. When we return, we discuss what a youth arts center does for the community. I'm getting my degree from the college named TV School of the Year three out of the last four years. It's not in Muncie or in Indianapolis. I attend Goshen College, and communication is just one of the 35 outstanding majors offered here. At GC, you will work with professionals and get your hands on the camera in your first semester on campus. How do I know that Goshen College was the best choice? Right after graduation, I start my first job, broadcasting professional baseball. Take the next step towards your career. Goshen Youth Arts has been helping the young people of Goshen create arts since 2014. And as they grow and expand, I sat down with their owner, Zach Tate, on currently what they do and what is to come. Here's more. In a town like Goshen, the arts are taken very seriously. And as such, it is very important to pass on that artistic appreciation onto the next generation. Executive Director of Goshen Youth Arts, Zach Tate, shows us exactly how all of this got started. So Goshen Youth Arts came about, uh, let's see, in 2014, um, my wife and I kind of decided that we wanted to find a way to integrate the arts more into the community and to work more with uh, groups of people that we felt that were kind of being left behind. And so we found that youth age 9 to 19 fit that demographic really, really well, partly because of the diversifying population of Goshen and also just with the fact that kids tend to not be the forefront of people's minds as far as, you know, funding or places to gather, that kind of thing. Zach also told us how exactly Goshen Youth Arts serves the community and their mission. So we work with um, nine to 19 year olds um, within Elkhart County, but we also will work outside of the county as well too. 
Um, and we do after school programming for arts. We do uh, sometimes day services for students in after school program or for uh, homeschool programming. Uh, we work with the juvenile detention center. Uh, we actually go in there once a week with a, with a teacher to uh, basically be, be their art teacher. The mission of Goshen Youth Arts uh, is not to create, per se, the, great, the next great artist, uh, but it's to create divergent thinking from the community and to expose all community members or give all community members the opportunity to work within the arts. Uh, we focus on visual arts, so drawing, painting, printmaking, ceramics, sculpture, uh, fabric arts, those kind of things. Some of their upcoming events include their summer art programming, which runs through June and July, and they will be moving to a larger location sometime in the fall on 120 North Main Street to expand their capacity. We're excited to be working in Elkhart County. We're excited to be working in Goshen and to be with such a supportive community. Uh, we really are excited about the things we've done in the past and what we will be doing in the future, which is expanding, like I said, our programming to work with a larger population and to continue to be a cornerstone of a community developer within Goshen. Goshen Youth Arts makes sure that no matter what background a child comes from, that they will have access to the arts and that will in turn impact the community and their future. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Jeremiah Sherrill. So Brandon, now you like to draw cartoons. Uh, how big has art been in your life? Well, it's kind of an interesting because I don't have the same drive to create art that some people do, but it's still a nice thing to do when I just want to relax or unwind to just doodle a cartoon or something. It's mm. kind of fun. Mm. Nice. Coming up next is a day that is celebrated throughout the country, but is important to the Michiana area. You're watching the Globe News Report. Goshen College. Everyone's at home here. Students from around the world and down the street find inspiration and lifelong friends in our unique, supportive community, right here in northern Indiana. Cutting-edge academics, real-world learning, and small, personalized classes make the difference, all surrounded by world-class culture and championship sports. Most importantly, it all leads to a record of amazing outcomes in diverse fields of study. From pre-med to social work, broadcasting to accounting, schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Record Store Day is a yearly event that recognizes small, locally owned record stores. It is popular in the Michigan area. William Troyer went to three different stores to see how it's celebrated. William Troyer with more. Record Store Day is a day set aside for music, vinyl, and for local record stores. The Greater Michigan Area does an outstanding job of recognizing this special event. On Record Store Day, April 13th, we visited three area record stores to find out how they celebrated. Ignition Music Garage in downtown Goshen was the first stop. In addition to Record Store Day, they had the vinyl wagon with DJ refs to outside their store for customers to enjoy. We talked to owner Julie Hirschberger about the time spent preparing for this year's Record Store Day. Basically like a full month of preparation. Uh, they start with the release of the list and there's about it varies from year to year, but this year they had, I think it was under 500 titles they were releasing specifically for Record Store Day. So, um, looking forward to next year for sure. Local vinyl enthusiast David Zare shared his experiences at Record Store Day. It's been fun. We come down extra early. Uh, we have a grill going. We do a little eggs and bacon and that sort of thing in the morning, and then we come out and get in line and get ready to buy records. The Globe was also downtown at Ignition Music Garage broadcasting live. We interviewed morning show host Riley Friesner on what it's like to broadcast from Ignition. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. There's a little bit of, a little bit of high pressure because everyone in the store is listening and watching and normally I'm used to being in a room by myself essentially talking to myself but <laughs> um, this has been really really fun and um, I like spinning vinyl a lot and I like having the two turntables so you can go back and forth so it's been a lot of fun I really enjoyed it. To end the day we visited Karma Records in Warsaw and Orbit Records in Mishawaka to find out what other record stores were doing to celebrate Record Store Day. Reporting for Globe News my name is William Troyer. Jeremiah, you're big into music like I am. What do you enjoy most about records versus something like digital recordings or CDs? Well, I like the way the vinyl captures the sound. It's a much warmer sound than you would get on a digital recording. Uh, what about you? 
I really like how you can engage with the vinyl in a very different way. The texture of placing it on the record holder, not only that, but also like really interacting with the album art on the sleeve. It's just a really interesting way of engaging with the album as a piece of artwork as a whole. We return with a story on the Red Cross. This is the Globe News Report. I came to Goshen thinking that I'd just be acting, but over the course of my four years, I've taken part in all the other facets of the theater, and I think that's helped me gain a wider appreciation for theater as a whole. I mean, it takes all those things that I'm interested in, like design aspects of theater, the environmental studies course I took, and it takes my music major, and it just focuses it all into theater. The Red Cross has been providing services for over 138 years, and every March they honor those that have been allowing for that service to be continued. Zach Begley with more on the story. Every March is Red Cross Month. It's been that way since Franklin Delano Roosevelt declared it in 1943. The Red Cross takes this month to honor those who work for them and their volunteers so they can continue providing services. Today, I'm here at the Goshen Donation Center to donate blood myself and learn more about what the Red Cross does. What are some things people should know when they come to donate blood, such as things, restrictions, or things they should do when they're preparing? Make sure you eat a good hour or so before you come, something substantial. Um, lots of fluids for the day or two before you come. Um, and other than that, that's pretty much it beforehand. Red Cross does more than donate blood. Can you tell us some other things the Red Cross does? We also collect platelets, which is um, a component of your blood and is used primarily for cancer patients. We do that here quite a bit. Um, we also provide training for CPR and first aid, um, along with the disaster services. So at this particular donation center, are you aware of how much blood is donated uh, per day? Um, to be honest, for whole blood, which is what you're doing right now, that's not primarily what we do, and we maybe average Five, between five and 10 units a day. Mostly what we do here is platelet donation. And we have the capacity to collect close to 50 units a day. Generally, we average around 40. For someone who wants to volunteer at the Red Cross, what are some ways someone could get involved? Uh, we always need help on the mobile blood drives. They use volunteers in the canteen area and help registering donors and that kind of thing. Um, disaster services use these volunteers more than we do here. Um, all of the people that are, uh, do the actual venipuncture sticking, we're all paid, which you probably would want us to be. You said it took me about four minutes and 46 seconds. Can you tell me what the average is? Average is eight to 10 minutes. So you might be today's record. Is there anything that you would like to add that I didn't already add? There is a constant need, and especially for platelets. Whole blood, you can bank a little bit because it'll last. It has a shelf life of 30 to 45 days. Platelets only last five days. And most people that need platelets need more than one unit. So if you can, come out and give. All right, thank you so much. Thank and you. thank you for giving me a really good blood donation. <laughs> I'm glad it went well. Yeah, it went really well. The Goshen Donation Center is at 1123 South Indiana Avenue here in Goshen. You can donate every day of the week but Thursday. You can go to redcrossblood.org for more information. For Globe News, I'm Zach Begley. Red Cross has done a lot of good for a lot of people. That they have, Jeremiah. That's all we have for you today and this year. You following along on our social media at 91.1 The Globe, on our YouTube channel at 91.1 The Globe, or on globeradio.org, this has been year one of the Globe News Report.